Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guy, Wayne, and today I wanna to take you through a beginner's walkthrough of the T-Mobile Revel 7 phone. I'm gonna walk you through everything you'll need to know to learn how to use this phone. So make sure you watch all the way till the end so you don't miss any of the important tips. We're gonna start with going over just the exterior of the phone. So on the left side of the phone, you will find just the SIM card tray. Now, if you have a memory card from an older phone, you can also put it in this slot as well. On the right side of the phone here, you will find the volume up, volume down, and the power button, okay? And then at the bottom of the phone, you will find your uh, auxiliary headphone jack, your charging port, which is called a USB-C or Type-C port, and you've got your speaker grill right here. If you need to replace the charger or the cable, um, you need to look for a USB-C charging cable, and I'll link one in the description uh, in case you ever need a longer one or a different one. Okay, to turn the phone on or to wake it up, you simply are gonna press that button on the side, the pink button. Pressing it once will wake up the phone, now just take your finger, put it on the screen and just drag up. That's how you unlock the phone. Now right now there is no passcode on the phone, but later on in the video I will show you how to set a passcode so that no one can just pick up your phone and get into it and look at your personal files. You'll have a code you'll have to put in each time that will basically protect all your data, okay? So this is the main screen. This is called the home screen, okay? and. This is where you'll find um, shortcuts to a lot of your apps. And I wanna show you uh, a really quick tweak that you should make that will make the phone easier to use. Um, right now you have this little white bar at the bottom and the phone is in what's called gesture mode. And unfortunately gesture mode is not the easiest to use. So um, follow these steps to get rid of this little bar and get uh, some easy buttons that are called just the Android home buttons. It'll make it easier to navigate the screen. So we're going to take your finger and drag it, start at the top of the screen and drag down, and then do it again, drag down, and that's gonna bring up your settings shortcut button. We're gonna tap on that button. This will take us to our settings menu, and we're going to drag up all the way until we see the system option, tap on system, and then tap on gestures and then tap on navigation mode. And from here, we're gonna tap on the button next to three button navigation. When we tap this, we will now have these three buttons at the bottom of the screen, and this will make it much easier for you to navigate the phone. This first button here is called the home button. Tapping on this will take you back to the home screen. No matter what you're doing, tapping that home button will take you back to this screen. Now, to the left, you have what is called the back button. This always takes you back one step. So I'm gonna go back to the settings here, and I just wanna show you how that back button works. Now, if you remember, let's retrace our steps here. We went to system, gestures, and navigation mode. Now, I'm, in, I'm deep into the menu of the settings. If I wanna go back one page, I can tap on this arrow all the way in the corner, or I could just tap my back button, and that'll take me back one page. Now, if I wanna keep going back one page, hit the back button, okay? Press it again. And you can keep pressing that back button until you get to the main page of the app. And now if I press it again, it will take us out of the app. So all this does, it just helps us go back one step um, and you really are gonna use it primarily when you're in a menu and you're just trying to go back one or two pages. Now on the right side here, you have what's called the recent apps button. And this will show you all the apps that are currently running on the phone. Now I wanna pause and I just wanna explain to you when I say the word apps, what does that mean? So um, think of like computers. Computers have programs, phones have apps or applications. We just say apps for short, but whenever I say apps, I'm referring to the programs that are on the phone. So computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. So in this menu here, I'm looking at all the apps that are currently running on the phone. You don't wanna keep a lot of apps running because um, that can slow down the phone and it can eat up the battery. So the reason we would go to this menu is to either 
hey, I want to go back to this app I was using earlier, or I want to close an app that I'm no longer using. So for example, I was using this earlier. I'm not using it now. I'm just going to drag up the screen to close it out or swipe up. And I can continue to swipe to close out all these menus that I was using previously until everything is closed. And now all my apps are closed. Okay. Now, if I were to open up the phone app, okay, use my home button to get back to the home screen. If I want to go back to the phone app later, I can tap on the icon here or tap on my recent apps button. And there it is. So I can just tap. And that's how I get right back to something I was working on maybe earlier. So that's a quick rundown of what these three buttons do. They are the primary buttons you'll use to navigate the phone. Okay. Now, next, let's go into what is called the notification panel. So earlier you saw me take my finger, bring it to the top of the screen and drag down. So this section of the phone is called the notification panel. So the different uh, apps that you have, whenever they send you a message, you can see all of them in this notification panel area. So I'm getting a message here from the Metro service app. So I can tap here to see if there's some type of update with my service. Um, if I get a text message, it's going to show up in this menu. If I have a missed call, it'll show up in this menu. If I have a message from Facebook, it'll show up in this menu. And so this is just one hub where all your notifications are going to come through and you can easily um, just tap on a notification and it'll take you into that app so you can read it. Also, if you have emails, your emails will show up in here as well. Any new emails? So. Most people check this section of the phone a lot because it's just how you keep up to date with all the new information that's happening with your phone. Okay. Now at the top of the screen, you will find what are called switches. These are shortcuts to the most frequently used um, options in the settings. So for example, if you wanted to connect to a Bluetooth speaker, you want to make sure your Bluetooth, Bluetooth is turned on. If you notice here, this button is lit up in white and this button is, is basically darkened out. So my flashlight is off right now. My Bluetooth is on. Mm -hmm. If I tap on the Bluetooth icon and it goes dark, guess what? I've just turned off Bluetooth on the phone. If you are ready to use Bluetooth, we can simply tap on it to turn it back on. And if you have a Bluetooth device that you want to connect to, Take your finger and hold down on that Bluetooth button for one second, and it will take you to the menu where you can then connect to a new Bluetooth device. I can tap on pair new device right here, and the phone will begin to look for any Bluetooth devices that are around me so I can connect to it. Speaker, uh, Bluetooth uh, earphones, you know, they'll show up in this menu. You'll tap on the item and then you pair it. What you'll also find in this menu by swiping down is the internet option. Now, um, press and hold to open this up here. Now, you use this section to one, make sure you're connected to your mobile cell service, I'm connected to Metro by T-Mobile, and I have my 5G coverage connected. But hey, I also wanna to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Well, you wanna make sure that this Wi-Fi switch is turned on. This is off, this is on. Once you turn it on, it will begin to look for all the Wi-Fi networks that are around you. So for example, when you get home, the first thing you want to do is connect to your home Wi-Fi network, and this will help to cut down on you using your mobile data. Once you find your network, you simply then need to just type in the password and hit the check to connect. You'll also use this if you're at a coffee shop and you want to connect to their Wi-Fi or a Denny's restaurant, you're at a friend's house. Hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? You find the name of the network, put in the password, and then you're connected. So that's how you connect to Wi-Fi. So if you notice at the top here, all these important little switches are here to just make it easier for you to navigate the different settings of the phone. Now, here we have the uh, mute button. This is a really important button because if you're trying to change the sound settings, this is what you would use. So tap on it. Now the phone has changed from mute to vibrate 
If I get any incoming calls or notifications, the phone is gonna vibrate. If I tap it again, now it says ring. When it says ring, that means that if someone calls, the phone isn't gonna just vibrate, it's gonna ring. If I get a text message, it's going to actually make a noise that I have a new message. So this is how you toggle between the different sound settings. Mute obviously shuts all the sound off. So if you get a text, if you get an email, if you get a call, the phone is not gonna ring, it's not gonna vibrate. Vibrate is vibrate and ring means that all the sound is on. Now, getting back to this menu here, if I swipe down a second time, it'll bring up more options. So you'll notice at the top of the screen, I have this little slider. This is to control the auto brightness. This is to control the brightness of the phone. So I can drag this down if I want the phone to be dimmer, or I can drag it up to make the screen even brighter. So you know what works best for you. You can manually set this to a brightness that is the best for your eyes. And then we can swipe over and you'll have some other switches to some other important um, setting shortcuts. So go through here to see all the different things you have available. I'll link a video right here too. This is my tips and tricks video and it'll also go over how to customize this menu as well. So definitely check out that video. All right, let's hit our home button. Okay, next let's go over how to get to your apps. So one, one thing that's important I wanna show you when you swipe left on the home screen, you have other pages that you can get to. You can have multiple pages of basically shortcuts that are on your home screen. You know, whatever apps you use the most, you should have them on the home screen. Um, if I swipe right, it takes me to my Google menu that will give me updates on news and also frequent things that I search. So this is a great way to just find um, new news stories and things that are happening around you and also based on things that you search. Now, if I swipe up, it takes me to what is called the app drawer. This is where you'll find all the apps that are on the phone. Sometimes when you download a new app, it's not gonna show up on one of these pages. But if you swipe up, this is where you'll find all of those apps. And you can scroll through and see this is every single app that's on the phone right now. You also have these folders. So this is your Google folder. And here you have a lot more apps that are inside of that one folder. Some of you guys might be looking for YouTube. It's buried in that folder. So this is a folder. This Metro by T-Mobile is also a folder. And you'll find um, select apps there as well. So that's where you'll find all the apps that are on the phone. Now, if you wanna download a new app, you need to go to what is called the Play Store. This is where you'll find all the apps that are available for your phone. Now, before I get into that, I do wanna pause and jump back to the home screen. And I just wanna go over some of the apps that you see on this main screen here. So first, we have the phone app. This is where you'll go to make calls. And a little bit later, we'll walk you through the process of how to make a call. Next is your text messaging app, your contacts, camera, and Google Chrome, which is your web browser. If you wanna go on the internet, do a search, you go to Google Chrome, and you'll have to get through these initial settings here. And then at the top of the screen, you'll have a search box. You can tap, you can begin to search for a website or just do a Google search for something general. Let's hit our home button to get back to the home screen. Now here you have your photos app. This is where you'll find all the different photos that are stored on the phone. Now the app is asking for an update. So if you see that, just tap update and it will download the latest version of that app, okay? Now next, let's go over how to download uh, new apps to your phone. So you're gonna go to that Play Store icon now, I have not signed into a Google account yet, so before I can download any apps, I have to sign into a Gmail or Google account. So I'm gonna hit the sign in button. Now, if you have a Gmail account or Google account, you'll simply just tap in the box here, put in your email address, hit next, put in your password, and then it will uh, take you right into that Play Store. If you don't have a Gmail or Google account, no problem. You'll simply tap on the create account button and then you'll follow the steps. So hit create an account, 
it'll ask you to put in your first name, last name, your age, and then it will help you to set up a Gmail account. Gmail is free and it only takes about two minutes to set it up. You have to do this step or you won't be able to download any new apps on the phone. All right. Okay, so I put in my email address and my password and hit next. I'm agreeing to the terms and then it's gonna take me right to the Play Store. The Play Store is your one-stop shop for any apps or games that you would want to download to the phone. You'll also find uh, books as well. All right, so now we're in the Google Play Store and there's two ways to use this app. You either come here because there's a specific app you want to download or you just want to find something new to play with on your phone and then you go through here to see what apps are available. I'm gonna show you the first option because most people only come here because there's a new app that they already know about that they wanna download. I wanna show you that part and I'll show you a bit of how to navigate the store after. So, at the bottom of the screen, if you tap on search, it'll bring up the search menu. You'll wanna tap in this box that says search apps and games. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can tap in the box with your finger and you can type the app like that and hit the magnifying glass in the corner to search. And look, there's the Uber app. The other way, which is the funner way, is simply tapping on this microphone in the upper right corner. You can tap on the microphone and just simply say the name of the app and it will search it for you. Now, this comes in handy if you don't know how to spell the name of the app, right? But if you know the name, you can just do this. Uber. There you go. Uber Eats. So you say the name of the app. It's gonna come up. You can tap on it. If you'd like to see more information about it first, you can look at pictures. You can tap on the pictures to get a closer look. Hit our back button to go back one step. And now I'm gonna tap on this blue install button to download the app. Now while it's downloading, I just wanna point out a few things. Um, that blue button said install, and I'll show you this example here. So, this install button, right? It says, it, it just says install. This is a free app. That's the point I'm getting at. It's a free app. If this app was not free, the blue button would not say install. The blue button would say 199, 299, 599. So just keep in mind that any app where it just says install, that means it's free. But if it doesn't say install, if it has a price, it means that it is a paid app and you do have to pay before you can download it. Okay, I also just noticed that I downloaded DoorDash and not Uber Eats. So now I'm gonna download Uber Eats, okay? So after you've um, hit the install button, it downloads the app, then it installs it. And now I can hit my home button and it will add the app to one of my home screen pages. So I can swipe over and I can find it here. You can also swipe up, check your app drawer, and you'll see that app show up in this menu as well. There is our new DoorDash app, and pretty soon you will see the Uber Eats app show up in this menu as well. So that's how you find the app after you download it. Now, let's go back to the Play Store. So maybe you don't know what you wanna download. You just wanna see what options are available. Notice I'm hitting the back button to just go back a few steps. I'm back on the main screen of the app. At the bottom of the screen here, you'll find different sections. You'll have a game section, general app section, offers, and books. So you can go to these different sections based on what you're trying to download. If you just want to find a fun game, tap on games. You can then go to top charts to look at where the most popular games that are being downloaded right now. You can swipe over, you can find just kid games. You can find new games, premium games, which are games that are not free. Notice these all have prices underneath them. And then you have categories and you can search based on categories. So that's a brief rundown of how to navigate the Play Store and, and how to you know, search for uh, different apps for different games. And just play around in there and you'll find so many great apps to download and try out. 
and you can always uh, delete an app if you decide that you don't want it. In fact, let me show you how to do that now. Hit the home button, let's swipe up. Maybe you realize, oh, you know what? I don't want this DoorDash app anymore. You're gonna hold down on it and then drag it up the screen and notice this new menu has popped up. And I have to drop the app in the uninstall, uninstall button. And then it will ask, do you wanna uninstall this app? I'm gonna press okay. And just that fast, the app is now gone. If I swipe up, you'll no longer see it in the menu. So that's a brief rundown of how to download apps and just how to interact with them. Now next, let's go into how to make a phone call and also how to answer the phone when someone calls you. Okay, let's go to the phone app, which is right here. And the phone app has a few different sections. It has favorites, it has recent, and it has contacts. Okay, now you'll want to tap on this little icon here. This is your dialer. Tapping this will bring up the number keypad and then you can type in the phone number that you want to call. So in this case, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call this number here. Put in the area code first, then the phone number. Tap the green button to start the call. There we go. Now you can tap this button to put the call on speaker. You can tap this button to uh, add another call and do a three way. And when you're all done, just simply tap on the red button to end the call. So make it a call, super easy. And now that phone number is gonna show up in your recent calls. It also makes it really easy for you to call that person back because now I can just go over to that person's contact, tap on the phone, and then I can call that person again. So really easy to interact with those same phone numbers. Now I have a number right here that I called earlier. And if I wanna save that number to my contacts, I'm gonna tap on the number and there's a button here for add contact. Tap add contact. The top of the screen, tap where it says create new contact and then you want to put in their first name and last name, Tony Jones. Now, where it says saving to, you always want to change this. Tap on this arrow, change it to your Gmail account. The reason I say that is because if you ever lose this phone, your contacts will be backed up to your Google account. As soon as you sign into a new phone with your Gmail, all your contacts will be loaded into that new phone. This is a very easy way to make sure you never lose any of your contacts. Now, put in the first name, last name. I'm gonna hit save. And now, this number is saved into my phone and it will make it easier for me to call that person later. Okay? Now, let's see what it looks like when someone calls you. Okay, so I'm initiating a call. It's gonna come through right now. There we go. You're gonna tap on this green button here to answer the call. And there you go. We're right into our call menu, super easy. And when you're all done with the call, you obviously tap the red button to end it. Now, if you notice, a few other options have showed up that didn't show up for the other call that we made. So we can actually turn this into a video call because this person also has uh, Metro by T-Mobile service. So if you're calling someone that has Metro or T-Mobile, it looks like you can switch it right to a video call. So let's try that. Put the phone right here. So on the, on the receiving end, now the phone is showing up where I can just swipe up. And now, it has turned it into a video call, which is super cool. So if you see that video call icon, that's how you can convert the call into a video call, which is super easy, super cool. Let's go ahead and end the call by hitting that red button. Now, that is one way to answer the phone. I'm gonna make this call again. So this time, if we tap on that red button, decline, that's how we decline the call so that we don't have to answer it. Now, I'm gonna turn the screen off because oftentimes 
it looks different when a call comes through when you're not using the phone. So I wanna go over that as well. So this time the phone, the screen is asleep. A call is gonna come through. There we go. So this time you have to take your finger and you have to drag up and that's how you answer the call. Okay, call one more time. Because to decline the call, you do the opposite. Instead of dragging up, you drag down like this. Okay, and that's how you decline the call. So uh, notice it looks different, right? If you're using the phone, there's a little pop-up at the top of the screen that you'll see where you can hit answer or decline. But if you're not using the phone, and someone calls, you have to swipe up the screen. So just make a mental note of that so that you don't get frustrated if a call comes through because it's gonna look different depending on if you're using the phone or not using the phone, okay? And by the way, if you're getting value out of this video, please make sure you bump that like button down below. It definitely helps to push the video out so more people will um, see the video and hopefully it will help them in just learning, their, learning how to use their phone. So let's now move on and let's talk about how to send a text message and what all that looks like. So the text messaging app is right next to the phone app right here. We're gonna tap there. And basically, to start a new message, you would hit start chat. And from here, you can then type in a phone number or someone's name who's already in your contacts to send them a message. So I'm gonna type in Tony Jones. That was the number that we just saved. And it came right up. I can tap on that contact and now I can begin sending Tony a message. You know, hi, type your message. This is your send button that will send off the message. There you go. Now, if I wanna send Tony a picture, I'm gonna tap on this little picture icon next to the plus. And then I can see the last couple of videos and pictures I've taken. I'm gonna send this picture, I'm gonna just tap it. I can send multiple pictures by tapping on more than one. I think you can send up to 10 picture files depending on how big they are. Now when, you've, when you're finished, I can then tap in the box where it says add text and then I can say, take a look. Take a look and then hit my send button here to send it off. And now I've just texted Tony these three pictures. Now I can also send Tony a voice memo. Maybe I don't wanna type out a message, I just wanna send just a verbal message. I'm gonna hold down this microphone. Hey, good morning, Tony. Hope you have a great day, buddy. Notice you do have to hold down the microphone until you finish talking. Once you let go of the microphone, it will stop recording the message. Mm -hmm. It's gonna add it as a voice recording, and then I can hit this send button to send it off. Now, maybe you made that voice recording and it's really early in the morning and you don't want Tony to get this message until 8 a.m. I can hold down on that send button and then it will let me schedule when this message is gonna be sent. I can say, hey, send this tomorrow at 8 a.m. Send this later on today. Or I can hit pick a date and time and pick a date. And then I can pick a time of when that message goes out. So that's how you schedule a message. And maybe you don't want to go out right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit send so it just goes out. And then I can tap on that play button to hear the message. Now right now I have the, the sound turned down so you can't hear the message, but it's gonna send a voice message. Now one more thing, there's a little plus to the left here. Hitting that plus will allow you to send other things. So a GIF, stickers, your location, maybe you're meeting at a restaurant, you can send your location, um, or a contact. These are all other things you can send. Now one more thing that I think is important actually is, so there's two microphones here. I want you to pay attention to this. The top microphone is for sending a voice memo. The bottom microphone is for using the um, text to type feature. And so by hitting the microphone, instead of me typing the message, I can say the message and it will type it out for me. Just like this. So you'll tap it the first time, you'll have to give it permission. 
Let's tap it again. Hey, what time are you planning on coming by today? Question mark. Tap the microphone when you're finished talking. And look, it just typed out the whole message for me. Always double check and read it because it doesn't always get it perfectly, but proofread it when you're done. Hit that send off button and now it just sent off the message. So that's a brief rundown of what it looks like to send a text message. Now I'm gonna close out the text messaging app and I wanna show you what it looks like when someone sends you a message. So I just replied to one of those messages and if you notice there's a little dot that showed up right next to my, uh, or right on top of my text messaging button. If I tap on that, now Tony responded to my message and it says 3 p.m. See? 3 p.m. And any new messages will always go right to the top of the screen, okay? They'll always go right to the top, so you'll always know what was the last message that came through. All right, that was our text messaging app. Next, let's move into how to take pictures and just how to use the camera and, and where do you find the pictures after you take them, right? So the camera button is right here. And let's start with this button here. This is how you switch between the front camera and the rear camera. So if I switch it, now we're looking out of the front camera, the camera right here. And if I turn it around, now it's looking through the rear camera, okay? And if you want to take a picture, you just tap the shutter button, right? Tap the white button, and we'll take pictures. If you want to take a video, you do have to tap on the video button. And notice the button will change to a red dot. And so we press the red dot, we'll begin recording, and you'll see it counting up here. Now, while you record, you can still take pictures by tapping the white button to the left. This will take still shots while you record your videos. You can pause during the recording and then start back just like that and stop the recording by tapping on that red button. Okay, the next thing is you have this little one X right above the shutter button. This is how you zoom in and out. So you can drag this to zoom in more or zoom out. There you go. Obviously, the more you zoom in, the more it gets a bit distorted, so be careful with that. And then you have this more button all the way to the right where you have some other camera options. Pretty cool, you have a slow motion, panorama, hyperlapse, you have macro, which is for those really close up detail shots. And you have a Google Lens feature which will allow you to um, take a picture of like uh, a picture with text and you can pull the text right off the picture using that feature. So that's just a quick rundown of how to use the camera. Now, after you take a picture, if you want to see the picture you've taken, you can tap on this little square to the left. These will show you the last few pictures you've taken. Okay. And generally, if you just want to get to all the pictures that you've taken, you need to go to the Photos app. Hit Not Now. And here I can see all the pictures that I just took and the video. And you can swipe through and you have options to edit, to delete. You have the Share button here. You can send it out as a text message, out as an email or to a social media app. So that's a brief rundown of just how to take pictures on the Revel 7. The camera does a lot more, but I mainly just wanted to focus on just the basic things you need to know to get up to speed with using the camera. Okay, next, let's go over how to set a passcode on the phone so you can protect your information. We're going to swipe up on the home screen. Again, home screen, swipe up, and then swipe up again, look for your settings. From here, we want to go up to security and privacy and then tap set screen lock. And now you have to choose what type of lock you want to be on the phone. And it's sort of separated by aggressiveness. So a pattern is you just draw a pattern that you have to remember each time to unlock the phone. 
a pin is probably the easiest because it's just a number combination and then you can set a more aggressive password with numbers and letters. I'm gonna just use the pin option and let's make it, you can go up, you can go between four and six digits, it's up to you. I'm gonna make it one, two, three, four. Obviously make yours harder than that. I'm just making it easier for the sake of the video. Hit next, enter the password again, and then hit confirm. And now our password is set, we're gonna hit done. And now if I turn the screen off, turn it back on, if I try to swipe up the screen, it will not ask me to put in a code. Put our code in, hit the button, and now the screen is unlocked. Now, after you set that lock screen code, you can then set up your fingerprint sensor and you can use the power button to unlock the phone like this. Go to where it says device unlock, screen lock, face and fingerprint unlock. We'll tap on face and fingerprint. Now we'll have to put in our passcode. Next, tap on fingerprint. Hit more, I agree. Now our sensor is right here. Take the phone and I'm going to press with my thumb just like this and keep pressing and lifting. And every time you put your thumb back down, try to put your thumb back down in a slightly different way than before because the phone is trying to learn your fingerprint and make sure that when you tap that button that it's always going to pick it up properly. Okay, and we're almost there. Again, try not to put your fingerprint, your finger down the same way each time so it can learn your, your full fingerprint. Now, one recommendation I have is always add two fingerprints, one from your left hand, one from your right hand, so that if you have something on your fingers, um, you can just switch hands and unlock the phone versus just only programming one fingerprint and then being stuck if you have an issue, so. I'm not going to do it right now, but that's just my recommendation for you. Let's hit done. If you want to later add a fingerprint, just come back to this menu and just hit add a fingerprint. And that's how you secure your phone. Now next, let's go over how to make the text size larger. So you're going to go back to the settings. Now, because we recently opened up the settings, I can get there from pressing my recent apps button just like this. Settings, see that? I'm gonna use my back button to back out and get back to the main page, which is right here. So search settings. Okay, if we wanna change the text size, we can swipe up and go to display. And then from here, we're gonna go down to the appearance section and go to the display size and text. Now, we have a few different things we can adjust. First is the font size. So if I hit the plus, you'll see it's showing us here how the text size is getting bigger. Hit the plus again. Every time I press it, you'll see the icons get a little bit larger and the text gets a bit larger. Actually, the icons stay the same size, but the text gets bigger. So you'll want to play around with this until you find a size that is, is most comfortable for your eyes. Now next, you can make the display size larger as well. There you go. And you'll notice everything is getting much bigger. Now, if I hit the home button, you can see that now all the words are a lot bigger. If I go to the internet, Google Chrome, you'll notice the menus are even bigger. Everything is gonna be a little bit bigger. Now, it, some of the websites are not going to get bigger. This is sort of the frustrating part, um, but it will make all the menus larger. It'll also make your text messages much larger as well. All those messages that we sent. Another little tip is when you're in text messages, you can pinch to 
to make it bigger, so pinch out or pinch in to make them smaller. So that's just a quick and easy way to make things bigger or smaller. I'm gonna go back to the settings. Oh, one more. So play around with these two options here and that's how you can sort of adjust to find the right size to work for your eyes, okay? All right, the very last thing I wanna cover in the video is how to set up your email. Now, we've already put a Gmail on the phone, but you might have other email accounts. And so to add those other emails, first I wanna show you how to do it using the Gmail app, and then I'll show you how to download other apps in case your app in case your email doesn't work with Gmail. So we have our Google folder here. I'm gonna tap on that folder and go to Gmail. Now, right now I have this Gmail already on the phone. I can simply tap add another email. And these are all the different email types that are supported by Gmail. So if you have an Outlook, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, you can use, you can tap on any one of these menus to sign into that specific email type. However, if you don't see your email type here, maybe you have an AOL or a Verizon.net, then here's a tip to find an app that is compatible with your email type. Hit the home button, go to the Play Store, tap on search, and this little tip here, if you tap that search button twice like this, one, two, it'll take you right to the keyboard. So here's what you wanna do. Tap on the numbers in the bottom left corner and look for the at symbol. Then tap on the ABC to get back to the letters. And however your email address ends, that's what you wanna type. So I'm trying to find an app that works with AOL.com. So I need to type in AOL.com, and then I'm gonna hit the magnifying glass to do a search. It's now gonna recommend apps that are compatible with that email type. So I'm gonna tap, oh look, the AOL app. Let's go ahead and install the AOL app. So now I can download the specific app from AOL and use that to sign in seamlessly with my email. If you have a at sbcglobal.net, at verizon.net, you simply search for that. It'll give you apps that are compatible and then you'll pick one to download and sign in with. Now, I'm gonna give a quick rundown of just how to interact with your emails using the Gmail app. I'm gonna hit take me in so I can get right into Gmail. Okay, so, Right now you can see these are some of the emails that have come through recently. And I can just pick one to open it and read it. Google Fitbit. Cool, I read this email. Now, if you've read the email and you don't plan on ever looking at this again, you'll wanna hit the trash can and delete it. However, if it's an important email that you may wanna find again in the future, you can hit this button, which is to archive it. It means that it's gonna move it out of your inbox, but it's still gonna save the email. It's gonna move it to a folder called archived. So you decide if it's an email you want to look at later or not. I'm never gonna look at this again. I'm gonna hit the trash can to delete it. Now, some of these emails you might say, I don't need to open these. I, I don't care for them, no problem. Simply tap on the little circle next to the email and this is how you select multiple emails to delete at one time. I'm going to delete those five. And I'm going to hit the trash can. And just that fast, those are all deleted. All right, guys, so this brings us to the end of our video. I hope you did find it helpful. I tried to cover everything that someone who is new to this phone would need to know how to interact with. Um, leave me a comment down below and let me know if the video was helpful. If you have any other unanswered questions that you would like to be answered, you can always drop them in the comment section down below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I see them. Um, if you found value in the video, please hit that like button down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. 
I will have a link here to another really helpful video so you can continue to learn how to use your phone. And here you'll find a playlist with all the videos I've shot on this phone. So check out both to continue your education on the Revel 7. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.